Learn to create an action game in Unreal Engine 5 at unfgames.com Hello and welcome! In today's video, I received a request in our Discord server and it looked like a really quick request. It's about Coyote time and it seems that this person is not happy with the Coyote time tutorials they have found in, on, the, on the internet and I thought I already did one but it seems i didn't or maybe it was on a stream but here it is first i'll just create a third person project this is the easiest to work with it, it will be easy to see i'm giving it the, as a name coyote time and let's create the project here's the project if i press play i should have a character that already moves and jumps so let's get into coyote time Coyote Time is, by the way, if you don't know what it is, maybe, probably you wouldn't click, have clipped that video, but it's a way that you can jump in the air. And it's very useful. Oh, I press F1. It's very useful because it will make your game not require perfect um, frame jumps. So if you're jumping here, you should be able to jump, but if you're not on top of anything, you shouldn't be able to jump, right? But sometimes, depending on the speed of your character, this will make it a lot harder where your user will, will think or feel that it should have jumped, but it didn't. Instead, it fall down. So, Coyote Time is a way of making your players feel more in control of the character they are controlling. So, it's very useful whenever you're dealing with side scroller or any type of platforming game. So that's what we're going to do. Whenever you're out of the platform, so you change to a falling state, what we're going to do is create a little timer. If this timer is active, then we should let our player jump, even if it's in the air. And you will see that the final result will actually look normal. Because you really don't know, I mean, uh, unless you have a super, super vision where you can slow down your, your frames per second in your eye. I mean, you won't be able to know if I jump here or if I jump come on, earlier, like here. And you will see what, what I mean whenever we finish developing this feature and it's very simple let's go to the character and it should be in the third person folder let's go to blueprints and here it is let's double click it here's my character and we will see the jump functionality here you have the enhanced input action whenever you press spacebar you jump whenever you stop holding the spacebar you stop jumping pretty easy. So we need to allow a jump whenever we are in Coyote time. So let's create a variable that holds that state. Variable, boolean, Coyote, Coyote time, or we can call it is in Coyote time. So I'm going to drag and drop it with control so immediately I get the variable by holding the control key. Let me move it. And if it is in Coyote time, what I want to do is enable our character to jump. Right? So it should look something like this. You can create a branch very easily if you hold B, uh, and by B I mean this letter, B, for branch. So, something like this, right? Kind of, but not exactly. Let's compile, and right now Coyote Time is in false. Let's press play. 
I shouldn't be able to jump, even though I'm pressing spacebar like a madman. If I put enable, I'm able to jump, right? But if I'm falling, I cannot jump. So what is the easiest way to make our character, character able to jump? Well, if you knew a little bit of C++, you can enter this, uh, it's called can jump. It's existing the character and you can override it. I mean, we can override it here. Like if we go to function override and we can create our own version of can jump. Let's go to, where is it? Can jump. And if I always put true, then it always can jump and I can jump in the air. Yeah, but this is not following the rules that maybe you have seen in our double jump video or in the jump buffer video. So it's not that easy like, oh, let's just override it here because you need to take in consideration a, a little, well, it's like three conditions. Let's right click and call to parent, no, add call, here it is, add call to parent function. Here it especially tells you what exactly is checking. It's checking if it can ever jump, it's checking if you are crouching. So there are a lot of checks. I mean, I said that it will be easier in C++ and let me delete this, can jump internal, because in C++ we can just copy and paste code and modify the part that we want to change. So it's, we won't be able to use can jump if we're looking for a fast solution. And if you don't know C++, then uh, you can do the same in blueprints. Not exactly the same, but you can achieve the, the same in blueprints. So another way that we have to make our player jump is by changing its movement mode. So whenever we are walking, we're in the movement mode called walking. And let's just get the tick. Let's just print a string and let's get the movement mode. And it's only get movement mode. If you can't get it, then it's, it, it exists in the character movement component, which is this one. So let's just drag and drop it. And from here, we should be able to get it. Here it is. Get movement mode. Let's just put it like this. And because it's in the tick, I really don't want my log to show every frame. So, I mean, I don't want to save the, the previous values or I don't want to see them because this doesn't really save save it to anywhere. Let's just put zero here. So now we see that whenever we're walking, we're walking. Whenever we're jumping, we are actually falling because there is not an actual distinction between a jump and falling. You're just in the air, right? So when we're falling, that can jump function returns false whenever this walking is changed to falling. But we can manually override it. So let's do that. If we're in Coyote time, we are going to set the movement mode. Can I just set movement mode? Here it is, set movement mode, and it gets it from the character movement. Perfect. Here is the component we dragged before. And let's just connect it here. So if I'm in Coyote time, what I'm going to do is set the movement mode, not to none, but to walking. And then I'm going to try to jump. Right, so let's display. Let's try to fall. Oh, I should have already fall. I forgot to, <laughs> to press the spacebar. Okay, so I'm falling. I'll press the spacebar and it lets me jump. Perfect. But this also works 
when I'm jumping normally. And that shouldn't be the case. So first, we need to change the, the way we're handling the Coyote time. We need to, at one specific point, enable it. And at another specific point, whenever the timer runs out, disable. So we, whenever we jump, we need to disable the Coyote time. So the way that we can disable it, for sure, whenever we jump, because even if we have a double jump, we don't want to use the Coyote time because we already have a double jump. We are already jumping in the air. So whenever we jump, we just set the Coyote time. To false. So this fixes the issue that whenever we are falling and we jump, we can no longer jump again. Yeah, pretty sweet. Now we need to fix the issue now that we are never in Coyote time again, right? And if I'm not in Coyote time, we should still be able to jump. So what I'm going to do is this or you can also do it like this because that way you make sure that always whenever you jump you are disabling the coyote time right but this doesn't work anymore because we are not enabling the coyote time anywhere so let's do that whenever we change from mode which is i want to know if i'm falling or if i'm jumping so we need to know first whenever we change from movement mode so we saw this in the other video of the jump buffer we have an override button here and we can override the on movement mode change so whenever we go here is the preview previous movement mode Whenever we go from walking to falling, and I'll just double, I'll just copy paste that with Control C, falling, let's just and, so whenever we're going, the previous mode was walking and the new movement mode is falling, here we will activate our Coyote time. We can create a function, custom event, start Coyote time timer. Here you can add uh, a timer or a float, but to start it is basically enabling it. So it's in Coyote time. And this will start it. Now, this will make it work. Or it should make it work. But you will see that if I'm jumping from the... From the floor, sometimes it's doing something weird. And I don't like it. But if it's... If we're just falling... And then we jump, then it's working correctly. Except for the fact that the Coyote time is not ending for some reason. It should have ended. Oh, okay, okay. It's not, it's not ending because it's changing from walking to falling. Right here. Walking, and we jump, and it changes to falling. So we need to determine when are we jumping and when we're just falling from an, from a ledge. So to determine that, we need a variable called is jump. So we will get it, and we only want to start the coyote time if we are not jumping. And usually I like to create my variables before um, 
creating the logic behind them because it helps me uh, discover the correct path or uh, i mean if this part doesn't make sense to me then for sure i, I wouldn't need to waste time implementing how do i know if this character is actually jumping so for now for me this makes sense right also it should be my in coyote time should start at false by the way <laughs> yeah we really don't want to start in coyote time so now that we have this variable we need to fill it with the correct value so how do we know if i'm jumping well it's easy whenever we press jump and we jump well, then we're definitely jumping so here is jumping and I'll put it to true now when do we know that we are not longer jumping is when we land so here in functions there should be a on land on landed and here I'll change the is jumping to false now we should we shouldn't feel that anything's weird with my jump Whenever I'm falling, the Coyote time should still work. Now, the only problem is that we are not using a timer with my Coyote jump. So as long as I'm falling, I can use that Coyote jump. So let's start the actual timer here. Let's set timer by event. Here this time, you can be uh, very generous with your Coyote timer, but it usually ends up looking very badly if you do, do this. Something between 0 0.1 and 0 0.2 is more than enough. You just need to play with the values. And this timer, whenever this time finishes, and it's a good idea to promote it to a variable and call it Coyote time timer just so later on it's easy to understand what exactly does it, that 0 0.2 means when this timer ends it will trigger an event so we can create an event add event add custom event and here it is oops and whenever it finishes We just need to deactivate the Coyote time. time. Just like this. So if it's 0 0.2, then you will see that if I'm, I'm falling for too long, here, oh, it, it worked because I jumped when I landed. Don't worry. That didn't work. But if I'm jumping... From there, it does jump, and you don't really notice it unless I increase this time. If I put one second, then for sure you will notice that I'm, I'm actually jumping in the air. So that's how you implement a Coyote timer in Unreal Engine 5. Hopefully this was useful, and I'll see you in the next one.